Hi there, welcome to season two of Full Stack Life. Uh, we're going to start off with using something uh, called Amazon Lambda. Um, I'm going to show you how it works using Node.js. Uh, Amazon Lambda is a very cool little service that allows you to spawn up a little uh, node process, uh, run your commands, probably a very CPU intensive command or function, and then it closes itself down. And it works really, really well. Uh, Amazon will scale very nicely for you and allow you to run all your code in parallel. And it just saves you putting all your stuff on your main um, node process. Yeah, I know there are things out there uh, like Cluster that will allow you to spawn in uh, multiple processes, you know, and take advantage of multiple cores, uh, fibers, threads, generators, these kind of things are very interesting that you can do with Node. But I think fundamentally what you should do is take anything that is CPU heavy and throw it somewhere else. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in a very simple, um, you know, maybe less than 100 lines of code, really, just to get up and running with Amazon Lambda from a node process, and uh, hopefully you can apply it to your own code somehow. Okay, thanks. Okay, so showing you how to work with Lambda is dead easy. Um, all I've got here is a very, very simple function called echo stuff, and guess what that does. Um, we're doing this in line and all I'm doing is exporting a function called echo me which I've created here on line one and what that does it prints out whatever was sent to it because what I'm doing is I'm going to send this uh, an object literal with a property called word to echo string. I'm then going to take that and I'm going to add a little exclamation mark to it and send it back in an object literal that also has a super secret integer there um, basically I want to show you how it keeps its types and all that kind of stuff and then you do context succeed return me which is this particular little object literal so that I think should be quite straightforward so before I go any further of showing you how to wire this up with your node application I'm just going to um, I'm just going to run this with a test so what we can do here is we can um, just do a quick save and test here and that's the stuff that comes back so where did the word thing come from? And how come all this is coming out here? We echoed the word thingy. Because when you configure a test result, here we go, you can choose what you send it. So equivalently, I would be sending an object literal, stringified to JSON, over to my Lambda, and it would receive something very similar to this. Okay. And when it receives that, it goes through all this process, and it actually will send this back out, you can see. See what it's done here, it's basically JSON coming back. Okay, so that's one half of the uh, equation. The next thing we need to do is go into Node and actually set something up so we can um, connect with Lambda and then we can send it that information and wait for that response to come back. Okay, okay, so what you're looking at here are a couple of keys that, uh, that I have set up with. Um, Amazon Web Services. These keys will just allow us to invoke a function within Lambda. They don't do anything else. That's one of the beauty of, um, of using these keys within Amazon Web Services. You can control very specifically what roles uh, actions have. And so what we've done here is just got some sample keys doing something very limited, such as dealing with Lambda. By the time I push this live, I'm going to delete these keys, um, but it'll serve purpose for now. And I have them in a super secure configuration file. Generally in production, you're not going to want to do that. You'll probably want to set them in your environment. Uh, I'm just being really lazy, so just be warned, I'm just throwing them in here in the source for now. And in app.js, I don't have anything, right? And so what I need to do is I need to bring these in, and then uh, once I can reference them within app.js, I can then point them to Amazon Web Services and do all that fun stuff. Um, let me just clear out this for now, come back to that. Okay, so let's just go here and do that. I'm gonna say add a constant, config or conf is equal to and then I'm going to require that we bring in that JSON file and what will happen is it will pass that it will pass it into something so I'm going to do conf dot you know and I'm going to navigate all the way to this super secure conf dot JSON there we go I also want to work with Amazon Web Services um, so I'm going to say AWS is equal to require and it's not AWS, it's AWS.SDK, just be warned. I'm also going to work with Lambda, so I'm going to create a little variable called Lambda here. Set that to very little right now, and let's just have a little initialization. 
going on here. And this 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 is all just, all this is going to do is set up Amazon Web Services. Now currently we haven't brought that in. I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, but you, what you would do is this: you would say Amazon Web Services dot conf because by bringing in this require here, you're going to have this variable config is going to be equal to a new Amazon Web Services dot config capital C. And this requires certain parameters. Um, and it will take an object literal here and what will accept things like region. Uh, I'm currently in US East, I believe, US East 1. Uh, Lambda isn't available in all regions, so you have to keep your eye out for that. If you get silent failures, mate, you, you want to check your regions, yeah. So as well as the region, we need to have the um, the key, which is, I believe, what's it called? Access secret key, that's it. Access secret key. And that's going to now be from my configuration, which I've already preloaded. Um, access, Amazon Web Services secret access key. I also need, wait a minute, that's secret access key. I did that wrong, didn't I? There we go. Secret access key. And the other one they have is, let's see if we find out, get pre population. That's the one. And this then is called access. Key ID. Okay. All right, all the hard stuff's done. <laughs> so what we have here is we have a basic configuration set up, and only when you come to interact with Lambda and invoke the functions is this going to check whether you have the correct permissions. So I think we should do Lambda equals new AWS dot Lambda. You can pass in the version of the API if you want in there, but let's just run with that for now. So once we've got this in place, we can then um, we can attempt to run a function. On Lambda. So let's separate this out a little bit. Okay, what do we want to pass in here? Well, in order to invoke a function on Lambda, it takes a certain amount of parameters. So I'm going to say var settings. And it takes a function name, which I'm just going to set to function string, so I'll pass that in, and a payload. Okay, so what do we want to, what function do we want to run? I think we called it echo me, or was it echo stuff? We'll soon find out, because if you type in the wrong name of the function that you named it on, um, Let's just go over here, let's just check. So I named it echo stuff. Even though I've called it echo me in here, the function name according to Lambda is gonna be echo stuff, right? So that needs to be called echo stuff and I need to pass it um, some settings. I'm, let's just think about something we can send. How about, actually, what does it need? Let's check. What did we do on the test event? Ah, I'm gonna steal that. Testing from client. Okay, so this is currently an object literal. Um, in order for this to work when you invoke it on Lambda, we have to turn this into um, into a string. So we're gonna have to turn this into JSON. I can do Lambda oops, dot invoke, and then it can invoke that. I need to pass in the settings. So the settings is everything for the payload, the function name. Currently I'm passing in echo stuff, and this is the word to echo, so I'm gonna do json dot stringify. And I'm stringifying the payload, and then I can send all those settings, and then I can handle that. Handle response on lambda. Okay, so let's create a little function called handle response. And the response that's going to come back, I'm just going to print that onto the screen. 
and see what we're dealing with the console. DIR spots. Okay. Um, so one of the issues you have with work when you work with Lambda, and generally when you're working with Node, is if there is no error whenever you're doing a callback, um, then the first parameter is going to be null. So what they do is this kind of thing. And you've, you've probably seen this a lot in, in if you've ever worked with Node before. If nothing is going wrong, then this is going to be set to null. So you probably want to do this. If there's an error, if it's anything other than null, then we need to you know say, look, problem. And then we can we can inspect that, can't we? Console could have just thrown an error actually. Um, okay, and then you return out there because it can't do anything. Otherwise, it's all good, and you do have some sort of response. This will be null. This will be something, and that's what we're looking at. Okay. So I think that's about it. We just need to bring in this guy, and that's very very easy. Uh, the way I like to do this is just create a new little file here, um, and I'm going to say dependencies. Doesn't have any yet. Save that out, call that package .json. Okay, bring up the uh, console here real quick. Come on, come on. Okay, and then we do node package manager install, and the one I'm interested in is Amazon Web Services SDK. And I'm asking it to save those pieces of information. So I haven't bothered with license and README, but you can see everything that's going on there. Yes, it's changed, and that's what's being brought in. We have the node modules with the Amazon Web Services in there. So that can close. That one can close. All right. So I just cleared my console here, <clears throat> and I need to make a change. I just noticed something that was a little bit amiss here. Um, as I scroll down and I ran this, it errored. And with a bit of screen flow trickery, I was able to just magically pretend that didn't happen. And really it was because I missed out this. I did that wrong. Okay, so you're gonna need to make that change. All right, so I'm gonna save that. And let's try and run it. Whoops, node app.js. Okay, wonderful. So what happened is we end up with an object literal here with a status code of 200. And then we had a payload, and you notice this payload is JSON. With the advantage, it keeps its uh, number types, etc. So what we have to do is we have to do it just a little bit of a uh, little bit of parsing here for handling this response. So if there's no issue and the response came back successfully, um, before we go into the payload, we're going to have to do what they call payload with capital P here, P A Y L O A D, and I'm going to just do a quick json.pass and then this is going to be my data so I'll just do part data okay that's it uh, we should be able to inspect that now so console log providing we have the status code 200 I can then say the secret was and do data dot super secret int String and it will already coerce, but let's be a little verbose, verbose I should say. Um, and what else? The word to echo. Let's just do that. Data dot word to echo. Let's put those on new lines. All right. Let's just make sure this whole thing works. Let's just run it. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then if you go over to your client. And you start changing things around. 92. Okay, save and test it. We'll do its thing. Okay, go back here. Let's try and run that again. Good to go. So what you've done here is you've managed to offload anything that could potentially. I know this is not in any way CPU intensive, but if it was CPU intensive, this is a place to do it uh, because even though Node itself is generally thought of as asynchronous and non-blocking really it's the event loop and the um, that is that is allowing you to have non-blocking io whenever you have functions that run they still require the cpu and yes you can uh, do fancy things with generators and fibers and uh, even with node cluster you can you know 
create all these processes and all these cool things. But I think fundamentally, if you're doing anything that has any type of computational uh, need, you should offload that and just let this do I.O. Uh, that's my take on this, okay? All right, hopefully that helps. Only a few lines of code, but at least you're hitting Lambda and offloading CPU-heavy stuff, okay? Cheers.